going to be doing some differential leveling outside the shop here today. Uh, we need two people for this job that I'm about to demonstrate. Uh, this right here is our leveling rod and uh, this one here has an imperial measure on this side and metric on this side and I'll show you briefly how to uh, read both of those. Um, but before we do, so the, the person who's holding the rod has, has uh, well, really one job, just to hold the, hold the rod. Hold it nice and nice and plumb, nice and straight, and hold it steady. Uh, when you're extending the rod, the only thing that holds it is this little plastic button right here. So you don't want to be yanking on that thing. Just pull it till it clicks in and away you go. If you need to bring it back in, just press it and slide it back in. When you're looking through the scope, you'll see a reading something like this on, on your instrument. So let's say that our line was right there where my pencil is. Uh, that would be my, my crosshair line. I can see by this red four here that we're at four feet. And then this points directly at the nine. So we're at four foot nine for elevation. And each one of these spaces value is an eighth of an inch. So that's four foot nine, four foot nine and an eighth, four foot nine and a quarter, Four foot nine and three eighths, four foot nine and a half, right, and so on. We would go. That's our inch, that's our measurement right there. But that would be five eighths, three quarters, seven eighths, four foot ten. Here's a look at the metric side. Now, metric side is similar in that the the space has value. So this really isn't fourteen. It's one point four meters. So one point four meters is right here on this line. So this is 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1 1.45. Uh, you can see now we're still on this, this right hand side with this sort of backwards looking E. So 1.45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 5. And then the 1.5 meters switches to the left side of the, the rod and uh, we go up the same, the same scale there. So 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1 and so on. That repeats, keep going back and forth as we go all the way up the rod. The second part that we need for that is the instrument. This here is an automatic level. And there's really nothing too automatic about it uh, other than it has an internal compensator and uh, it will allow for slight movement, a little bit of bumping or maybe not completely perfect setup of the bubble. Uh, this is just just your traditional builder's level is all it really is. So we'll take it out of the package. I want to show you a couple things about it. First thing that we want to do is when we're setting it up for the first time, you should be able to see a notch in there. Right there, there's a, that's a notch there, and that, that tells us we're right in the center. So before we start leveling it, we want to adjust this. So we see about half that, and we want to get that set on each one of these leveling screws. And what's going to level it is this bubble right there. We want to see it right on the level. Uh, there's a mirror here to see it. You can see it in, in that mirror right now. There's the bubble moving around all over the place. Uh, personally, when I, when I set it, I like to look down directly at the bubble, uh, but if you set it up at, at eyeball level, you can't really see it. So you can use the mirror, but remember that when you're setting it then, everything is reversed because it's a reflection. So the first step for setting up the instrument is to set up the tripod and get the tripod nice and stable. So I'm gonna take it, extend the legs. I wanna set it at a, at a comfortable height. I don't want to set it way up here, or I'm going to need a box to stand on to look through the telescope. I don't want to set it down too low, or I'm going to be crouching down to look through it. So we've got a, a nice reasonable height, our legs extended, lock them into place. And if I was on soft ground, what I would be doing is stepping on each of these feet to hold it down. Now, what I need to do when I'm setting up is to get that table as close to level as I can, just by eye. Uh, that'll make leveling the instrument a lot easier. Here's the surface of my tripod and here's my instrument and you can see that it threads on right there. So I'm just going to take this, set it on. And tighten it on here. So like I said before, we want to get that table 
uh, as level as we can before we start putting the instrument on. Now it's approximately level and uh, I'm just going to adjust it so that the bubbles right in the center of the dot there. So here's the instrument set on the tripod. I'm going to take a look at the bubble here and I'm going to adjust my leveling screws as I see appropriate. Why don't I take a look in here? Oh. And I just adjust the screw until I start to see that bubble move. And there are the three leveling screws, which I'm just going to keep adjusting until I get that bubble right in the middle. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go with that in. And to check it, just turn it 90 degrees. Oop, where are we? Check to see that that bubble stayed right in the center there. It's pretty close. Okay, so I have Joel helping me here, and he's down there standing on the uh, the benchmark. So that benchmark is just a catch basin. That's our known elevation. We're going to assign it an elevation of 100, and we use that so we don't work with negative numbers. So my first thing I did here is I set this up like the sights on a gun, and I lined this up with that point, so two and one and uh, just kind of aimed it generally down towards the rod and then I looked through the rod and or through the rod through the instrument and uh, focused to make sure that I could read it so I'm gonna try and put you right on here so you see if you can read it it's not working out as well as I had hoped it would you can't quite see what oh, almost we got it there so Joel's holding it nice and plumb down there nice and steady uh, when I look through with my eye I can see that it's five foot two and three quarters. So while we're taking all these shots, we have to record it. And this, these are what we call field notes. So these are the, the headings across the top. So station, that's where we're gonna put underneath that is our benchmark one, which is our catch basin. And uh, backside here, the short for that is BS. Height of instrument is HI. Foresight is FS for foresight. Elevation is EL, and intermediate site would be IS. So there's a couple of uh, formulas here for us to know. So height of instrument, first of all, equals elevation plus backside. Uh, the other formula we need to know is elevation equals height of instrument, subtract foresight. So you can see there's a, the back sights are plus sights. So some people like to put a plus there and the four sights are all negative sights there. So our first site that, that we took there back to the catch basin, which is our benchmark. Uh, so everything had to do with the benchmark is on this row. So under the back sight column, we shot five foot two and three quarters. So I'll write that underneath there. So the elevation for the benchmark is 100 feet and again we assign it 100 feet if we don't know what it is if, if we knew it if it was like 275 feet that's what we would put there this one since we're making the scenario up really all we're doing here is we're shooting from that catch basin uh, up to a curb at uh, the other side of our lot here and we just want to know basically all we really want to know in this scenario is how much higher is that curb to our benchmark so to use this now, as we have our instrument all set up and we shot back and we got a five foot two and three quarters, what we want now is our height of instrument. So we'll use our formula, height of instrument equals elevation, there's our elevation, 100, plus back sight, five foot two and three quarters. So the height of instrument then is 105 feet, two and three quarter inches. And that's it, so now we're gonna turn the instrument and work on our foresight. So now Joel has left the benchmark and he's walked down over here and he's holding the rod in a similar way. It's nice and plumb and he's got a spot that we're going to use as a turning point. We've identified a spot on the pavement there which is not going to shift on us. Uh, it's clearly marked on the ground and it's right by that parking bollard. So I marked my five foot two and three quarters as my back sight. Now that I've turned the instrument here, I just turned it 180 degrees to focus on where Joel is. Uh, I, this will be a foresight to the turning point we'll call turning point one. So there's what we're seeing through here. So it's four foot five and five eighths, what I read. 
Right, so we've taken a, a foresight reading to the parking bollard. So what we're going to call that parking bollard is turning point one. And often on, on the far right side here, we would have uh, something, a column that says notes. We don't have that here, but I'm going to just, just put it in here anyway. I'll say notes. So I'm going to say that's the bollard. Okay, and we have, it's the same height of instrument that we haven't moved the instrument at all, but we're shooting a foresight to turning point one, the bollard. So everything to do with turning point one is on this row. So it's a foresight, and the foresight we shot when we looked through the instrument is four foot, five, and five eighths. So the foresight here is four foot, five, and five eighths. I like to do the math as I go along so that I can see, because when I'm, I'm standing in the field there, I can easily see whether or not I think that catch basin is higher or lower than my parking bollard. So, uh, well, I can see that, but I, let's do the math right now. So this says right here, elevation equals height of instrument, subtract foresight. So my, my elevation of turning point one, the bollard, is 105 foot two and three quarters, subtract four foot five and five eighths. I'm gonna do a little bit of manual math here. Uh, and this is where the metric side of that uh, the leveling rod is is easier. The, the, the math is easier. We don't get into fractions and all that kind of stuff. So if we remember way back in the day when we had to do math like this, so I can't take five and five eighths away from two and three quarters. So I have to borrow a foot from over here. So this becomes 104 feet and uh, add 12 inches to that. So I now have 14 feet and three quarters. So three quarters, subtract five eighths, so three quarters is six eighths, six eighths subtract five eighths is one eighth, and 14 subtract five is nine, and 104 subtract four is 100 feet, nine and one eighth of an inch. So we can see the difference in our elevation right there. So this number that we just calculated here is the elevation of turning point one. So it is 100 feet, nine and one eighth. So that, that being a higher number, it's above, it's higher than our 100. So it's nine and an eighth inches higher up in elevation than our catch basin. Okay, so there's Joel still set up on his uh, turning point one, the exact same spot on the pavement. I've taken the instrument here, set it in between here and our next benchmark that we wanna know, which is the end of that curb right there. We need to know that elevation. So I set the instrument up, turned it 90 degrees to verify that it's set level. Now I'm going to take it and sight it in over here to Joel and take a reading. So the reading I just took through here is four foot three bang on, which is kind of rare. What I forgot to show you is when you're adjusting this fine, if Joel was really farther away, sometimes it's hard to pick up that rod. This little uh, adjusting screw on the side here turns it side to side ever so slightly. Uh, and uh, this one over here, that's for focusing. And if you happen to be looking through here and, and you can't uh, find the crosshairs, this eyepiece adjusts right here, and that will bring the crosshairs into focus for you. Okay, so now we're on the other side of that catch basin to, and between it and the curb where we're ultimately shooting to. So we have a back sight now where Joel never moved and we moved the instrument. So. Uh, what we shot through the scope is four feet three inches. So now we have to find our height of instrument. So we are going to take our known elevation, that's the elevation of the bollard, plus our back sight is going to give us the, the height of instrument. All right, Joel's heading over to our last benchmark here. This is the what we were trying to shoot for in the beginning. So he's gonna hold it there and he's gonna hold it nice and plumb and I can use my hand signals to tell him which way to adjust the rod and I'll just sight it in like this, making my fine adjust on the side and focus and take the reading. We have four foot 10 and five eighths. So I did the math to find our height of instrument. It's 105 feet zero and one eighth. And we took our foresight to the curb there is four foot 10 and five eighths. So now when I add my height of instrument, or sorry, I take my height of instrument and subtract four foot 10 and five eighths 
I will end up with the elevation of my benchmark too. So same instrument setting, I'm turning and I'm shooting forward to the benchmark. The rod's on the benchmark. We're just calling it a benchmark too. That's because that's what we want. We want to know the elevation of this as compares to our given benchmark. So take this number, subtract four foot 10 and five eighths. That will give us this elevation right here. So I did my math on my scrap piece of paper here and I ended up with 100 feet, one and a half inches. So I can see by doing my math on here, that I, this is what I'm gonna do at the end. I'm gonna check all of my, my math. So if I take 100 feet and compare it to my, my final elevation of my benchmark to my elevation of the curb, the curb is only an inch and a half higher. So I'm gonna record that here. So it's one and a half inches and it's higher. So the math check that I'm gonna do on all this is I'm gonna add all my back sights and add all my foresights and compare the two of them. And I should have a, nu a number that's higher by an inch and a half on my foresight. So I'm gonna do that off camera and come back on here. Here's a look at my two numbers. So I took a sum of these and I ended up with nine foot five and three quarters. Took a sum of my foresights, ended up with nine foot four and a quarter. Then I subtracted nine foot four and a quarter from nine five and three quarters ended up with zero feet, one and a half inches. So by comparing those two, I have an inch and a half, an inch and a half. So my math is correct, and I can have just confirmed my elevation is, is inch and a half higher. Now this does get obviously harder, the more turning points we have, the longer these columns become, and the harder that math becomes to sum up. And uh, that's why uh, metric makes, uh, makes it a lot easier, but uh, if we're working in Imperial, this is what we're up against. So some people like to turn that all into uh, decimal inches, which would be more accurate than decimal feet. Uh, so you can throw that in your calculator and you don't have to have a, you know, a scrap like this or a scrap two by four or something to, uh, to do your math on. Uh, it's a little, obviously it's easier on a calculator, but uh, well, here we go, that's, that's how you get there. Here's a little sketch of the scenario that we just did. There's the benchmark, CB for catch basin. Our instrument set up here, or set up number one. Shot back to it, got five foot two and three quarters. That's our back sight. Turn the instrument 90 degrees. Turning point one is the bollard. We read four foot five and five eight, so there it is. So we went up, across on the level, and back down. So then I walked over here on the other side of Joel. Set up second time, shot back, got four foot three. So we went back up, that's a plus sight on the back sight, came across, and then we draw back down to the top of the curb, which is our benchmark two. And the total difference that we got is only an inch and a half over the whole span all the way across there.